So if you're a maker or you know you have a YouTube channel, anytime a delivery truck arrives at your place and drops a box off, it's a good day. So this box arrived today and uh, it's something that uh, quite a few people on the channel have asked for and it's also something that I actually wanted for the shop. So if you want to find out what's inside, then stick around. How's it going everybody? Steve here and welcome back to the shop. Now, as I mentioned, this box arrived today. This isn't a Ferro Laser 2. It's a blue diode laser from Artur, brand new. It just released yesterday and it arrived on my doorstep today, so I'm quite happy. Uh, I actually wanted one of these for the shop. There's a quite a few things that, that a blue diode laser will do as far as engraving much better than a CO2 laser. So. I, I wanted one of these anyway, but quite a few people on the channel have left comments or sent me emails saying, hey, why don't you cover the entry level uh, uh, end of the market as well? Because not everybody's going to drop six or eight thousand dollars for a laser. So, you know, here it is. And what I'm going to do is unbox this, put it together, show you, uh, you know, what it can do. Uh, and uh, give you my honest opinion at the end on whether you should buy one of these. Now, if you do want to buy one, there's a link down below. You can click that. It's an associate affiliate link rather. Uh, so the channel will benefit from that if you do buy one, but uh, it's out there and uh, hopefully uh, we all like it. It's a complete surprise. You can see the tape is still on. So let's get going. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, of course, is unbox it and see what's inside. And I can tell already that it's very nicely packed. So we'll start with our user manual, a few certifications for the laser itself. So let's set that aside. And inside the box we have, it's, it's very nicely packed. And Surprisingly, you know, we have, it, it's well, it's mostly assembled. So we have our laser. We have, of course, some goggles and always use goggles for safety. Uh, some cables, tools, and a piece of acrylic. This is, this is for the focus, three millimeters and more foam and now we get to the actual laser itself uh, there's gantry or x x and y or y rails sorry there's side rails end rails i guess power supply we'll put over on this side let's move all this over here and more foam so as i said it's very well packed uh, the gantry it's it's a nice nice little unit and our last our last thing is the rail the back rail with with the controller and connectors and that appears to be it. So the box is empty. So when we put this together, it, uh, it looks pretty simple. And the nice thing about, the, uh, about everything here is you can scan this QR code to get uh, assembly manual, the user manual, but and really this entire book is QR codes for things. So uh, in 10 different languages. There is a part list and all of the things that come in the box, although you can see them all here. So uh, let's get going on the assembly here.
Okay, so I've moved the laser over actually into inside the laser cabinet of my big laser. And the reason for that is because diode lasers all tend to require, they're open, so they require some kind of ventilation to evacuate the fumes. And this was the easiest way for me to do it. So, uh, so first thing I'll do is I'll plug in the power and that just plugs in there. And I'll plug in the USB port. And to turn on the laser, you hit the reset button and then hold the power button for five seconds and you'll see the, the blue light comes on to say it's both connected. And now we'll go and connect it to our computer. So the Ferro Laser 2 uses a language called Gerbil, which is commonly used with CNC machines. Uh, it happens that the laser uses it. And as a result, you can use a free program called Laser Gerbil, which you can download and it can talk to the laser and you can put images there or, or engraving and it will go do the job. But I'm, I'm going to use Lightburn only because I'm on a Mac. Laser Gerbil only runs on Windows. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that new device. And what I'm going to do is rather than create manually like I did when I created this entry, if you watched my D DIY laser project, I'm going to go and say just find my laser. And what it'll do is scan the USB bus and, and look for a laser and uh, it'll take maybe a minute or something. It's pretty quick here, you saw. And it found this, this laser called Gerbil. So I'll add that device and I'll give it a name. I'll call it the Ofero and I'll give it the proper name, Laser 2. And you can see it already found the X and Y axis sizes at 390 millimeters. And uh, we can just hit next. We're going to use the front left as the zero position. And now this laser doesn't have limit switches. So what we want to do is turn this auto home off because we don't want the laser homing when we power it up because it, there is no limit. So it'll just come down to the corner and then just bang against the corner and make a bunch of noise. So we'll select that and finish, and that's it. And you'll see the UI changes here a bit, the user interface. But one thing I'll call out is this positioning. So we want to start from the current position because we don't have uh, limit switches. Uh, generally, it's easier to lay down your material, put the laser at the starting point where you want it, and then just say go rather than trying to do absolute, because if you look at the absolute position, I'll pull it off the laser here. Um, it, it may, or in this case, it happens to be zero because I've pulled the, the laser down into the lower left corner, but uh, it can be in some strange positions because it has no real way of knowing where it is absolutely. So just pick current position and then you can manually position the laser before you start a cut. Uh, anyway, that's that's all we need to do here. Uh, let me pick that laser. And you can see in the case of a Mac, it already picked this port. There's a debug port as well. Uh, the other thing you might want, might be interested in is if I look in the window list, there's also this console. And if I bring it up here, uh, I don't know if the laser may not be on, but uh, this will show you everything that's going out to the laser. So if you do run into problems, you can bring up the console and uh, and you can it will show you what it's what it's passing back and forth to the laser. So it's a good debugging tool. Uh, anyway, with that, I'll uh, I'll just lay down a piece of material. We'll do a quick test, and then uh, we can try out a few different materials. Okay, we'll prepare for uh, to do a test here. So I'm going to just use a piece of cardboard since it's cheap and readily available. And I'll just call this my lower left corner. I've got my laser kind of sideways here inside my other laser. But so we'll just drop our focus plate down and just drop the laser onto that and remove that and we're good to go. So that's all we need to do.
Okay, so I spent a bit of time doing some some engraving and a bit of cutting with the Ofero Laser 2 and started off with my favorite dog. And you can see this thing is amazing. Like I, I am super impressed actually with, with the ability of it to capture uh, photos. Uh, it even, this is actually a hardwood floor and you can actually see the, the separation of the boards. So it's pretty detailed. Uh, tried a little engraving on some, some Baltic birch and of course it looks you know, equally fantastic. It's, this is just stock video or stock images from Ortur that they provided me. Uh, I did a bit of acrylic because people are always asking about acrylic with diode lasers. As long as it's not clear, you're okay. And you can see here, it actually did a really nice job on this scrap of acrylic I had. This is actually translucent, so. And while I had the acrylic out, I did a just a bit of a grayscale. I probably started with a bit too much power here, but you can actually see, unlike a CO2 laser, which isn't really good at doing uh, graduated uh, gradients, rather on acrylic, it, this actually worked pretty well. You can see the distinct difference in the colors. And uh, last engraving, uh, and this is another thing that a CO2 laser can't do very well is, uh, or at all really, is engrave on stainless steel. This is stainless steel plate. And, and if I zoom in, you can see there's actually the pi behind the pi symbol is actually lighter shade. And so is the design is lighter than this, the word sliced here. So uh, again, I'm really amazed and this is, I can rub this pretty hard and it's not coming off. So it's, it's in there. Uh, last thing I did was uh, just a cut on Baltic birch, just a single pass to cut three millimeter. Uh, and you can see it's, there's almost no kerf. Like th this is pretty, pretty tight from a kerf perspective. The beam is incredibly small. So Again, uh, you know, definitely an improvement on a CO2 laser. Now, of course, you wouldn't be able to cut nearly as thick with this or as fast, but if you're doing this kind of thing, it's, you know, very little charring on the sides. I'm, again, like I'm impressed. So that's, uh, that's a bit of sampling. All right, so you saw I, I did quite a bit of engraving. Uh, this video of the creation of this video is actually lapsed over a couple of days. So I did quite a bit and uh, just to really kind of put this laser through its paces and you can see it sitting back here. Uh, so uh, it works, it works well. And uh, you saw some of the output. It looked pretty fantastic, honestly, doing especially engraving photos. So. Just before we kind of jump ahead here, a bit, a few pros and cons, things I liked and didn't like. On the like side, uh, it's really well constructed for the for the money. It's extruded aluminum everywhere. There's almost no plastic anywhere on it other than the actual laser module itself. And uh, assembly was trivial, honestly. In, in you can open this box, and in tops 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you can be doing your first laser job. So it is pretty easy to, to assemble. Uh, as far as, uh, I guess the last thing I like, there's lots of power options here. There's at least three different laser modules you can buy. The one that comes with the laser is the short focus, which is great for engraving, which is one of the reasons you saw the engraving look so good. There's also a long focus and uh, a low power laser as well. So uh, lots of options, consider it. I could see myself buying multiple laser modules. Now on the, on the con side, a couple things I didn't like, and none of these are terrible, but uh, the ground connector that you screw onto the top of the laser module, it's great that they have it, but it, it's kind of stiff wire. And I could see if you're changing modules on a regular basis and, and changing that. Uh, it may break off. So it would be really nice if there was an actual connector there because it would make changing the modules much faster. This is an open laser. You can see it sitting there. It's just a frame. Uh, that's great because you can literally drop it on anything and start engraving. But it does need ventilation like all diode lasers. And you actually saw I stuck it in my uh, inside the cabinet of my big laser. 
so that I had a way to vent it, uh, vent it outside. So uh, keep that in mind. If you're in a closed space, you're definitely going to want to find a way to, to vent this. Uh, last, because it is an open laser, again, like all of most of the diode lasers, uh, you need to wear safety goggles. Uh, now, a pair of glasses comes with the laser, which is fantastic. Uh, you can certainly buy uh, better ones if you want, if you do a lot of work. But these ones are fine, but it, it does frustrate me a bit that I'm walking around my workshop with, with green goggles on. So, uh, you know, definitely the best thing to do is to build a box for this if you buy one of these or any diode laser, really. Uh, so, so that's the pros and cons. So before we wind down here, I'll give you my recommendation. Would I buy one of these? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a fantastic laser for the money. You can get up and running really quickly. You can do pretty much anything you could do with a CO2 laser. Granted, it may take you a little longer, but on the plus side, you can also do materials that CO2 lasers can't do, stainless steel being an example. Uh, so yeah, so it's definitely worth having, uh, if you're interested in one, there's a, an affiliate link down below, uh, feel free to use that. And, uh, there's actually, because it's a brand new laser, it sits between the Ofero laser one, which is a small laser and the, uh, Otour laser master pro two, which is, which is roughly the same size as this one, a little bit bigger footprint. Uh, it's in between those two. So it's not quite as high power as the top end, but it's it's bigger bigger footprint than the Ferro Laser One. So uh, you know it's it's kind of perfectly spaced in that kind of middle of of the market uh, on the diode laser side. Uh, price is right, features are right. I'd say yeah, go for it. Buy one of these if this is your first laser. This is definitely one you might want to consider. Uh, anyway, with that we can wind down here. As always, I'll put a video up on the side and get out there and make your world, and I'll see you next time.